And that, my friends, is what a Harley Davidson should sound like. What's going on, YouTube? FXDL's Brooklyn is back in the building. The 2001 Dyna FXDX. There's been a lot of hype around this particular year and model within the last decade, and it's for good reason. So in this video, we're going to discuss whether the Dyna Super Glide Sport FXDX is really worth it. So for this one, we need to go far back, even as far back as the AMF days. Remember as a kid when you would think about what an American motorcycle should sound like, should feel like, should look like? That, my friends, is the Harley-Davidson Super Glide. From the beginning, this was a bike where Harley would offer one of their biggest stock motors into one of their lightest frames. This was a bike for a rider who was interested in a fast and light bike with no frills. A bike that could very much be used as a blank slate. Within the Dyna era of these bikes starting in 1995, Harley-Davidson began to see how people would turn these bikes into more formidable performance machines, often opting to black things out rather than going the all-chrome route. So at this point, Harley-Davidson had finally decided to give the people what they want. Hence, in the year of 1999, we got the Dyna Super Glide Sport FXDX. The first run of this bike in 1999 offered better suspension, dual disc brakes, and the iconic dual tack speedo combination, as well as coming in in an all blacked out option as opposed to all the chrome that you would find in the classic FXD. A year later, in the year 2000, Harley Davidson would then double down on this bike, offering it with better suspension, most notably the adjustable front suspension, and even better brakes than what was offered in the first edition in 1999. From the reception and onward, these bikes would go down as a legacy Harley Davidson. So moving into the reason why you're probably here, is this bike actually worth it, especially two decades later? So my short answer is 100% yes. For me personally, this bike has excelled within the urban miles through New York City. Compared to the late year Dyna, allows for tighter and easier maneuvering in hard situations. And the 88 cubic inch twin cam offers more power than my 80 cubic inch Evo. We know that New York City is one of the hardest riding conditions out there. And if a bike can pass that test, well, like they say, it can make it anywhere. I've also found that this bike excels in situations such as mountain twisties, which I've used it a lot in. If you're in a situation where you need to lay down highway miles, similarly, this bike will do it well. Finally, for those of you who want to do the bike trips, it can also be used for that purpose with literally three upgrades. Bags, sissy bar, and a windshield. My brother Rob, aka Old Man Armstrong, proved this point to a T on our summer bike trip together where he pushed his 1999 FXDX to do a 3,000 plus mile bike trip. Finally, the last point to make here is a large part of the stunting world often chooses this year and model for what they do. And I have to imagine it comes down to how easily throwable this bike is in tight situations as well as the upgraded suspension. So if these guys are throwing that type of abuse at this bike, I think it's a pretty good litmus test in regards to the bike's capabilities as a whole. So when I started coming up about a decade ago at this point within the New York City performance Harley-Davidson scene, the FXDX was a bike you would constantly see on the line. Even to this day, this is the year and model that I associate with what a traditional New York City performance Dyna is and should be. Hence, my very own Dyna FXDX was built by none other than New York City legend Peter Guns himself. The three questions I often get asked about this bike are the following. Question number one. Does it make sense to buy a 1999 edition of this bike, given that the 1999 edition had inferior brakes as well as suspension? My short answer to this is yes, and I could refer you to once again my friend Rob FXS Strong, who did exactly this. And at the end of the day, after doing a couple upgrades, most notably the brakes and the suspension, he probably wound up with a better performing bike with an overall less cost. The second common question I get is, does it make sense to get the even more sought after FXDXT, Harley Davidson's touring edition of this bike? My answer to this is, unless you find a really good deal out there, then it's so easy to just buy an FXDX and turn it into the touring version. All I had to do is throw on leather pros and a fairing, and my bike was essentially what the FXDXT was. The final question was, well, what about that notorious Dyna Wobble, bro? 
So the Dino Wobble is real, and that is a problem and an issue that continued even into the late year Dinas. For me on this bike, it will often happen in a very high speed situation if I'm going into a curve and I hit a bump, that's when it'll happen. As I got to know the bike better in a multitude of different situations, I began to find what the limit of the bike was and knew what I could do and what I couldn't do without risking the Dino Wobble. And if this is a huge concern for you, there are things that people do such as stabilizers, steering dampeners, upgraded suspension, as well as upgraded motor mounts to try to minimize this. But for me, it's definitely something that can happen, but it's never been bad enough to ruin my ride or for me to discount this bike in any way. So yeah, if you're looking for a bike that could do it all while still retaining that classic Harley Davidson visceral feeling and sound, this could be your bike. My FXDX has yet to let me down, and I have no plans of ever letting it go. As always, if you enjoyed this one, take a moment to like the video and consider subscribing. We do have a Patreon if you want some deeper cuts. We'd love to have you on the team. As always, stay safe and stay low. Keep that positive mental attitude regardless of what you ride. And on that, FXDLS Brooklyn is out.